Diary, hello, it is September 2023. Um, and you are looking at a Microtik CRS 305 10 gigabit router. And that's because I'm finally moving to 10 gigabit networking properly. Uh, and before I get into it, I want to point out to you that uh, as an IT professional, one should never put your cables away before you finish the project because chance would have it that something's going to go wrong. Um, so uh, for a number of years, um, I've been interested in increasing the speeds of our computer network at home. For a few years now, I've been using 10 gigabit networking, but for, for only two devices. The source machine used to be a Windows server and uh, it now is a Mac Mini. And that's going to our NAS box, which is just one part of a chain of our elaborate network in our UK based home, which is in fact also a smart home. So this video is about how we've changed to better 10 gigabit networking. And for that, there'll be a few diagrams, but to actually show you in, uh, in visuals, I have actually got this bargain priced and I'm talking about, let's say, £200, which for 10 gigabit networking is cheap. Uh, we've got an inbound connection from the Windows server. We've got an Ethernet connection, which is a control connection. We've got the outbound connection to the uh, NAS box. And we've got an inbound connection from the Mac Mini. So we've got a a four port setup, one is a control port, and we've got three machines with the possibility to have a fourth machine. Um, although we do have a pure fiber connection and I could connect this to our uh, fiber based uh, router, that would be a terribly bad move because we're on a secure network, a wired only network, and it goes through many different firewalls. So this is kind of the most secure part of the house. And to get from here through to the internet and back, we've got to pass through multiple firewalls. So uh, that's the subject of perhaps another video. Uh, a couple of things to talk about here, which is that this is a fanless device. It's got LEDs here. You can see that and a power on light. It's got the potential for two uh, power adapters. So you can run it in a kind of high, available, high availability configuration such that if one of the power adapters goes, you can take up the slack with a second power adapter. And these power adapters are bought from Amazon typically. Uh, here is one, it's a 24 volt adapter, suitably labeled, of course. So I wanna get on to the, before showing the, the diagrams, I just wanna get onto the, 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 the basic point, which is that 10 gigabit networking has been here for donkey's years. And by donkey's years, I mean, hmm, I'm guessing 10 years. I haven't even thought about how long it is. But I've had this uh, Windows server here from 2017, so that's uh, at least six years. And, 10, and I had 10 gigabit networking on my previous Intel server. So I know for a fact of six years, but I'm guessing for another, let, let's, say, let's say three or four years. But the price of 10 gigabit networking, surprisingly, has not come down. That's the first annoyance. And the second annoyance is that there's been a recognition in the marketplace that one gigabit networking is not quick enough. But instead of everyone going towards 10 gigabit networking, they've invented this a new standard called two and a half gigabit networking. So two and a half, two, two, 250 megabytes per second in, in plain speak. So I've recognized that 100 megabytes per second is too slow, i.e. one gigabit networking. 250 megabytes per second is pretty much what you'll get from disk transfer speeds. 250 megabytes, by the way, is the, is the SATA platter speed you'll get down a SATA disk channel from, from, from basically any hard drive that's worth its salt. You won't get much faster than 250 megabytes per second sustained. So I don't know if that's why they came up with this standard, but I'm so annoyed. Instead of going to 10 gigabit networking, many new board designs are now coming up with two and a half gigabit networking. How flipping annoying. Anyway. I'm bucking the trend. I've got a 10 gigabit networking uh, uh, device installed here. Of course, it's a Microtik product, and of course, it's running Router OS. And of course, I'm going to show you in a few menus time what a fantastic product is, and why would you be why, if you're a technically savvy person, why would you be buying anything else? Okay. So in this next part, we're going to look at the actual configuration we're trying to achieve 
We're going to dive into the MicroTik router itself to have a look at how wonderfully configurable it is. And uh, you're going to hopefully learn something. So the design that's been around for ooh, a couple of years, I've been busy, is that um, we've got uh, an Intel Windows server which talks via a copper cable through some patching uh, to a NAS box, which is somewhere else completely, just within the uh, 10 megabit copper range. And uh, that's been working. But then recently, the, a Mac Mini has come onto the scene. And one of the reasons for having that is that it's a totally silent device. And also, it's an incredibly fast device. But for the mean configuration that I invested in, it can't take over the... Um, the sheer mammoth nature of this Windows Server, which runs, well, it can run, it could run 10 virtual machines at once, but it's it, it's used for all kinds of development purposes. So the Mac Mini is really used as a workstation, and when I need a, 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 proper, a proper system, I've got to start the Intel uh, server machine, which leaves us with a problem, because uh, right now, some data is mastered here, and some data is mastered here. So what I really need to do is to invest in a, in a, a proper, proper 10 gigabit router because this is a point-to-point -point connection. You can buy a cable. This comes out a copper and it, I just bought a patch cable because this is a, a copper interface as well. Uh, by a copper interface, I'm going to show you, I mean to say a standard Ethernet connect, uh, not an optical interface that looks a bit like that. As we'll see in a minute, uh, that's quite a costly conversion. Um, so the new setup is like this. We've got a MicroTik uh, router. It's got one Ethernet control port, which you currently use for data. It's got four what's called SFP plus ports. And inside that, you've got to buy a separate doohickey. And that converts from the internal interface to the outside world, which in, I, which in the case I need is an Ethernet, a copper Ethernet. So these little gadgets are quite expensive, and the MicroTik one, um, they're not all the same. You'd think that they would all be compatible with each other. They're not. Uh, I've got two MicroTik ones, and I've just bought the second one, and I have no, one non-MicroTik one. And they're about £50 each. So those three sockets have cost about £150. The MicroTik unit itself cost about £150. Uh, it's still quite a cheap option compared with other 10 gigabit products and that's you know relates into my first part where I was moaning a bit about the fact that 10 gigabit networking is still stupidly expensive everything else in the computer world has come right down in price computer power has gone up memory prices are, are very low disk prices whew, they've you know they're like pennies now but 10 gigabit networking what is going on anyway we're now looking at the actual route I've showed you the, the, what we're trying to achieve we're trying to achieve a, a router whereby two machines plug in and a third machine is the NAS box. And there is no connection to the internet for this box. The reason being that this is a secure network. There's no wireless devices on it. There's only wired devices. And to get from this network out to the outside interweb, I've got to go through at least three firewalls. Um, and in fact, I haven't even bothered checking, but um, uh, yeah, we've got a firewall, we've got a full firewall. We can add firewall rules here as, as just as, of course we can, just as well as we could on any other device uh, in the MicroTik family. Anyway, I'm trying to show you here, we've got the uh, control interface. We've got four interfaces. I've named them. I could have called this uh, Fred. I've named it SFP. Should have probably named it SFP plus because SFP is a lower speed. Anyway, I call it SFP. You know what I mean. You see, at the moment, we've seen the, I've chosen these columns. We're transferring it to 4.2 megabits per second, four megabits here. So I'm, I was doing a, I'm doing a long uh, R-sync to the NAS box. Can I show you that? Yeah, here we are. Here's, here's something that's going on right now in the background. So uh, from the, from the, Apple system, I'm actually R-syncing, R-sync being a standard Unix utility, uh, and that's the subject of a, a much greater explanation uh, because R-sync doesn't work properly on the Apple Mac, and I, I need to I need to do a video to show people how to get it working properly. Uh, there you go. Here's here's some of the virtual machines that are pushing out. 
they happen to be mirrored to the, their, their master on the Intel workstation. They're pushed using rsync for the Intel workstation to the Apple system as a, as a safety. And then they're pushed out from the Apple system to the NAS. And that's going on as, I, as I'm speaking. So you can see it's quite a big load. So the good news is it's all working splendidly. I will show you some of the little wrinkles and you'll see how fantastic the microtics are. Let's look at the first interface. That's the interface connected to the QNAP. You'll see that it's got a shutdown temperature of 95 degrees. And by the way, this kind of information to me is super valuable and it's par for the course of microtech. We've only got 60 degrees now and that's because although the temperature was just over 30, we've cooled ourselves down to 29.3 degrees here. Now 29.3 uh, plus all the heating, got past 95 degrees C and it shut the interface down. Uh, but with the fan I've just put on there, we're down to a temperature of 60 degrees. We see what the supply voltage is, we see the vendor part number, it's just, what, what more could you possibly ask for? And so let's now look at the actual Ethernet interface itself. Now I've actually had problems getting this to work. It's not running perfectly because, try as I might, the QNAP will only synchronize at um, 5 giga, gigabits per second full. So that's a little bit disappointing. So it limits the maximum transmit speed to 5 gigabits and not 10, uh, which is 500 megabytes per second. But that's still um, a lot faster than it has ever been. And to be honest, I'm not sure that uh, we'd ever get uh, much faster than that anyway. So uh, let's, let's see what things we can see here. We've got the protection, we've got the actual official stats, we've got receive stats, transmit stats, and current status. There should be a graph somewhere. Where's the graph? Oh, here we go. So you see we've got packets per second. Now I have had the second um, trouble I've had is configuring, configuring the MTU speed. Um, and it's now it's now working. So <clears throat> Normally, if you're going out to the internet, you're going to have problems, but this is a purely internal network which is not connected to the internet. And so, uh, I'm allowed to make the MTU size 9000. So at the QNAP end, I make it 9000, and here I make it 9000. And this is trying to show you that the packets, the, the data within the packets will, is larger, and therefore, when the packets are put into these headers, um, there's less packets to port, there's less headers, and it's a more efficient translation of, of the data from the disk into network packets across the network, unpacking those network packets and putting it back on the disk of, in this case, the NAS device. Um, what can I show you next? Uh, I think I've got somewhere, have I got a program called Commander One. Now, Commander One is a, as far as I can see, it's an Apple clone of a PC program called Total Commander, either that or they're kind of like, I've had exactly the same idea for a program, except that Commander 1 is not quite as well implemented as Total Commander. Anyway, I've got a virtual machine here. This is sitting on the, this is, ironically, this is an Intel virtual machine sitting on the Macintosh, so I can't really use it, but it's been transferred as part of my automatic hour syncing. So now we've got 51 gigabytes. I'm going to press the copy button here. It's going to say, do you want to copy it over? And I'm going to say go. So these are actually a small number of quite large files. So you're not going to get much better speed than this. Okay, let, uh, I thought I caught a very big speed number there, but it's obviously slowed down a lot. How are we doing? Yeah, so it's going to copy the 51 gigabytes in three minutes. You know, I'm happy with that. I'm, you know, one of these speed freaks that you've got to, it's got to be running at 10 gigabits per second, otherwise I'm, I'm desperately unhappy. So I'm, I'm copying, you can see I'm copying at about three gigabits per second, six gigabits per second, three gigabits per second, sooner. So it's at, it's at least a decent three, gig, three gigabits per second, so at 300 megabytes per second, and I'm pretty happy with that. summarize what have we learned so we learned that I finally got a working 10 gigabit per second configuration between this the systems that actually need it which are my 
Intel server, my Apple computer, and a NAS box. Uh, this is a, now an MTU 9000 network running at 10 gigabits per second, although I've had trouble configuring the NAS box, it will only connect at 5. But the uh, Intel to uh, Apple box connects at 10 <clears throat> and can easily manage uh, 600 megabits per second sustained. Uh, to the NAS box, I'm getting about 300 megabits per second. Sorry, 300 megabytes per second, which is turned to 3 gigabits per second uh, network speed. So that's sufficient for my purposes, and those three boxes are now connected in a very fast fashion. The Microtik CRS uh, 305 is a damn decent product. It's got four fiber ports. You need to um, populate it with the SFP Plus modules to get it working with either fiber or ethernet. It's got all the standard Microtik facilities. So for example, it has got a firewall. You can uh, rename the interfaces. You can download the latest Microtik software. You can change the way that every aspect of this, if this product works. So it's, it's just supremely configurable. And you can do this either via a GUI or via a command line. And it's the same interface across the entire uh, Microtik range running Router OS. Okay, that's what we've learned. I'm very happy and it's about time that the, system, the household got upgraded to an actual working 10 gigabit per second network. Thanks for watching.